What's up YouTube? This is Biased and X of NI. Today I'm coming to you with an analysis video on the six slick monsters that I think that could potentially be dealt with with the ban list or even upcoming ban lists. All right. All right. For the, for all those who want to see my ban list prediction video, I'm going to have that video in the end screen at the end of the video. Right now, let's just get into the analysis. The first card up on the field is going to be Firewall Dragon. Um, I've been living on the Etherock before this game. It's literally one of the top um, Link monsters to summon, especially as a combo extender, primarily because any monster that this card points to is destroyed by battle or sent to the graveyard. You can special summon that one monster from your hand. It just gives you so much um, uh, power with that particular play to be able to keep special summoning out monsters from your hand whenever you send a monster to the graveyard. It enables OTKs. Just look at the Trickstar OTK engine. Lycoris crashes into a big monster while this card points to it. It goes to the graveyard. You special summon out Lily Bell from your hand. Lily Bell can swing at your opponent's life points. Bring that card back into your hand. You bounce Lily Bell back off your hand. Lycoris comes special summons to the field. This card pointed to it. It crashes into the same monster again. You just keep repeating it until you burn through your opponent's life points. The fact that this card being at one can enable an OTK like that is not good. All right. That being said, it needs to be put to zero. For me, I would like to see it be get the same treatment that Elemental Lord Grand Soil got, where it was on the ban list for maybe like two lists. Gets a hard ones per turn on this on both effects, and then be reprinted. In the special edition. Alright, if Konami wants to turn on kick us the alternate art version of the of Firewall Dragon. As part of that, I'm okay with that. Alright, but it needs to go to zero. Even yeah, so we Konami has time to get the rider on it. Next card that seems to be picking up a lot of attention is Nightmare Goblin. Again, same thing with Firewall Dragon. It is a combo extender of a card. This card enables your you to get a player to get an extra normal summon onto the turn on, during their turn. Um, that extra normal summon can actually be very huge depending on the deck it's it being used in. With that being said, we gotta weigh the pros and cons about whether or not this what whether or not the situation about this card can really be this can really be hit, dealt with on the upcoming list. Um, to be very fair um, yeah, it's a combo extender. Yes, it's generic. It can fit, be played in every deck, but using that as a counter argument, it's generic and it can supply a lot of different decks, especially road decks with that extra normal summon that they can use to help get their get their decks going even better. Um, the Nightmare R-Type in a whole is literally a toolbox R-Type that, um, really helped the link the mechanic take off. I mean, Firewall Dragon was great at the beginning. It was crazy with F3, but once it was dealt with, it, the link mechanic kind of floundered until we got the Nightmare R-Type, and it gave us utility cards for any extra deck. I mean, just Cerebus, Goblin, and Phoenix alone just adds so much to one particular a particular extra deck that it should be used to help you out. Um, the other thing that you could turn around and say is the time between this card's release to the next ban list. Um, personally thinking that the next ban list is going to be in September. This card came out beginning of May and three weeks before the May TCG ban list came out. So you gotta ask, has enough time really passed for Konami to really legitimately say, yeah, this card's got to get hit. The next thing is that since this card is a, a toolbox utility and very meta-relevant, Konami is making a lot of money selling um, Flames of Destruction booster packs, boxes, and even the special editions for the set just for players going after this card. Um, while this card is, So while this card is being kind of a chase card now, I don't think Konami is going to do anything too extreme. I ban it like a lot of people saying it should. Um, if they do anything to it, I can see them putting it to one. 
that would be the worst case scenario. Yeah, I know a lot of people will say, oh, that does nothing. Uh, you players can use Proxy Dragon or any other Link, must, Link 2 monster that has arrows pointing to his to left and right. You know what? To be very honest, if it comes to that, yeah, fine. Use Proxy Dragon or those other monsters. To be very honest, putting it at one means Konami is paying attention to what's happening with it, um, but they don't want to really hurt a potential product that's making the money. Um, another thing that works in their favor is the fact that it requires you to get to spend. It requires a three card investment to actually get that extra normal summon. Two cards for this Nightmare Goblin's initial link summon, and then one card for the cost to get the normal summon. So you gotta remember it's three cards. Compared to something like Double Summon, which basically all you have to do is activate one spell card. So that is food for thought. Worst case scenario, this card goes to one. Next card I'm talking about, this card was kicked around a lot with Bandless Talk, is all two tales of the Noble Knights again, thanks to Gokis and their extra link. This card was part of the combo. Um, a lot of the players would rank three into MX Saber Invoker. Um, special, yeah, special summon out. Uh, what was it? Um, Suprex, which then can special summon out another monster, if, if memory serves correctly. And then you can just basically link off, or you can link off the, new, the monster it summons with the MX Sabers, call this card out, and then you, you yeah, cycle more cards, and then you can just, yeah, summon more cards onto the field, go into a Nightmare Goblin, which will give you the extra normal summon, and then you just start building your field up from there. So you can understand the reason why it could potentially get hit. The one saving grace that that's protecting it is the fact that Konami has just recently gone back to producing uh, more Noble Knight cards. Noble Knights were actually one of the earliest TCG archetypes that yeah, TCG Konami gave us. Um, be that as it may, until TCG Konami says, hey, let's give, give the players another Noble Knight Link monster, I don't see Izzold getting touched. To be very honest. Sorry. It's, yeah, to help further sell their, uh, the new support for this R-Type, I don't see Izzold being touched at all. Well, at least in the TCG, I have no idea what's going to happen in the OCG, so... <laughs> Speaking of not knowing what's going to happen, we have this card, Summon Sorceress. Okay, I've heard this card being floated around quite a bit. Um, Summon Sorceress was actually just recently released in North America, specifically in the United States and Canada. And the primary reason, as a jump promoter, and the thing is, is that I think that right there enough is enough to actually protect it because the rest of the TCG countries they don't have access to this card. Um, they even if they import this card from either the U.S. or Canada to test play with it, that's all they can do is test play with it. Um, the cards jump, jump promos don't go tournament legal in other countries outside the United States and Canada until they're reprinted in another set. Which means having only this card is in th those countries is kind of pointless. I mean, if you want to test play, you can test play it online and see how good it is, and you can learn, learn different combos and stuff like that, which is very helpful. Um, but ultimately, it being hit, that it's just insane. I mean, you gotta turn around, take a step back. That the TCG list governs all the countries. In the TCG, in the TC, yeah, in the TCG, it's not just the United States and Canada. So just hitting that card is available in those two countries. Well, the rest of the ter territories don't have it. Is nuts to even suggest it for the TCG. This card's not being touched. OCG, I definitely see something happening. This on their October first list, whether it be put to one or banned. I definitely see something being done to her, OCG-wise. Another card. 
is a Ruchis Gold Drain. Now, a lot of people link this card to the number 42 uh, Galaxy Tomahawk play, where basically you, you use Galaxy Tomahawk to fill the field fill the field with tokens. You turn Galaxy Tomahawk and one of the tokens into a Cool Fort Genius. You turn another one into a into a Link Rebo, and then you have your four monsters with different names to go into this guy, and then you can fix your hand, draw four cards, s stack the th three three of those cards on the bottom of your deck in any order you want. Um, it gives you an extra normal summon from the hand, which is very huge, and it powers up any monster it points to. Okay, whether or not this card is going to be touched on the upcoming TCG list, I don't really see that happening. Um, as archetypes keep growing and being able to spam out more monsters, and eventually Link Spam itself, I definitely see this card possibly picking up a hit down the road. Um, but right now, it's pretty much safe. Um, I really can't turn around and say anything about this card being touched in the OCG. Um, it could be, it could not. I mean, I, I don't see this card being that game-breaking over in the OCG that much currently, so I don't think it's going to be touched there. Um, so, But it's, this is a card definitely to keep an eye on down the road. Now, before we go, we have one last card, and this is the other Link 4 elephant in the room that, needs, that definitely needs to be dealt with after Firewall is dealt with, and that's Borlo Dragon. All right, so right now this card can't be targeted with monster effects. Okay, that automatically makes this card a bit of a pain in the ass when it hits the field, since the game is a lot more monster effect driven. Um, it has 3,000 attack points, which makes it even more of a pain in the ass because it's a beefy body. It has a quick effect, which can't be negated, that weakens your opponent's that can weaken one of your opponent's monsters by 500 attack points. All right, I don't think the the losing 500 attack points on a quick effect is that bad. Making it a spell be a spell a quote unquote spell speed for effect. Yeah, I could see that raising some eyebrows. But the real thing here is that at the start of the damage step, if this card attacks an opponent's monster, you place that opponent's monster in this in this card. I mean, in a zone that this card points to, and take control of it. But send it, send that the monster you took control to the graveyard at the end phase of the next turn. Okay, so automatically we have a battle phase, or actually a damage step. Snatch still effect. All right. Now, for those who've been of you who've been playing this game long enough, they've seen Snatch Shield get banned initially, and then it came back about when the Quilt Forts were kind of big, or just getting big the first time around. What does Snatch Shield do? Well, here's the equip spell. I'm just gonna go quickly right to it. All right, Snatch Shield, you equip it. You equip it only to a monster you control, and you take your, your opponent controls, and you take control of that monster. And then, if it remains on your field, it basically your opponent gets a thousand life points, but typically that's not going to be the case because you're, you're going to be stealing their best monster, putting it onto your side of the field during your main phase, and then during your battle phase, you're going to basically, after you get your own big monster on the field, you're going to be swinging with both your big, uh, your big both of your those big monsters and pretty much ending the game at that point. In this particular situation, Borla with itself can be a one card out to a lot of difficult boards just by stealing monsters. Um, in combination with that weakening, it, weakening, you could actually just turn around and hit your opponent with some damage, take control of that monster, and then all of a sudden swing with a mo that monster in the same turn. It provides a huge amount of outs, and in my opinion, it's not exactly a healthy thing to have a battle phase snatch deal effect in the game. I mean, maybe if they... Uh, making a rider to it where the monster that it's that it steals can attack the same turn. I think that might be a little bit better because then at least you can turn around, steal that monster, and then maybe link it off in your main phase two, or yet yeah, do something with that monster in your, in your main phase two. I mean that's just my thoughts about it, but yes, yeah, something definitely needs to be done with this card once Firewall Dragon has been dealt with. All right, so guys, that's it for this video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this on my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bells, 
be notified whenever I throw up new videos. I'm going to have, like I said, I'm going to have my band list predictions in the end screens. Guys, if you want to see other topics about upcoming band lists be covered, uh, maybe make a suggestion down in the comments. Maybe stuff like, I don't know, token generated cars that haven't been hit. Can, this, can analyze those cards a bit. But until next time, guys, peace.